for your final one point perspective, you're going to use an underdrawing or a frame drawing uh, as the base for your uh, rendering. Interior designers uh, use this tool quite often because it's easier to quickly generate the frame uh, in a software such as SketchUp or Chief Architect or Revit, and then to place a piece of tracing paper over this and then modify it to, to suit your uh, design. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is find the vanishing point. So I've placed the vanishing point for you, uh, but as a designer, as an illustrator, uh, you're gonna have to find that for yourself. So how I found that is all lines merge. So if I just follow the ceiling, you can almost just put a pin there. All lines merge to this vanishing point. So uh, how I found that was simply, you know, I just took some solid lines and I placed a straight edge along that line and I drew up. I might take this wall and place my straight edge along that straight edge, draw a line down and where those lines meet, where all those lines converge is my one point perspective and my single vanishing point. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is find that vanishing point. That way when you modify the drawing, you can um, use that to modify. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to put a piece of tracing paper over this, uh, but you can. And quickly what I did is you have a, a minimum of things to do is I want you to either change the ceiling to a grid or a coffered ceiling, or I want you to change the floor to a grid-like pattern. So I chose the floor in this example. And the first thing I did was I started with the left corner. I could have started with the right corner, but from the vanishing point, I did this and moved that until I felt that I made a nice square in the corner. What looks like square in perspective. Then I took that measurement and I repeated that measurement equally spaced across the entire horizontal line at the bottom. And then I took those points, those measurements back to the line of perspective to create the grid. So that's step one that I would like you to do. Step two is modifying the bed. So the bed was just reading as a headboard with tufting. And I went ahead and pulled horizontal lines out from the back of the headboard. Horizontal lines are horizontal. Then in the lines of perspective, I brought those back. Horizontal lines are horizontal. And I've created what's called a winged headboard. From the back of the headboard, you can also take in the four corners, vertical lines up, and then box out and make it a canopy bed. So that would look nice too. So number two, make some modifications to the bed. I went ahead and added the wings. I added some back pillows and I, I made the outline of what will be a turn down at the foot of the bed. So vertical lines are vertical. Again, this will be something a little softer when it's done, but just to start, vertical lines are vertical. And then this will go back to the lines of perspective. So now I've made a turn down at the foot of the bed. This is your horizon line. This is eye level. So I would see just a little bit of the tops of my pillows here. The headboard is above eye level, so I won't see the top of my headboard. 
I will see the seats of my cushion, the tops of my arms of my chair. I will see the tops of the bench, the tops of the nightstand. I went ahead and, and when I retrace this, I just will make it easier. I want to make this solid or maybe I want to make this upholstered or something. So I filled that in. I thought the nightstand would look better um, enclosed. So I just enclosed the side. I enclosed the top. I did equal spacing down or you can make them slightly different size drawers and I returned those lines to the vanishing point. I placed an X through the front of my nightstand, which gave me the center point, in which I just made the suggestion of some handles. I drew in a small curve, which would represent a log. That log will then the bottom and the top We'll go back to the line of perspective. And then I place some flames. You can add some art. There's a TV. I just raised the height of, of those back chairs. Instead of pendants coming down, I drew a vertical line just to get a sense of what's center. And I looked at the bottom of the nightstand and I visualized an ellipse at the bottom of the nightstand. And I don't want that ellipse to go too far past, right, the base. So I made sure that it stays in here and has a slight curve on the bottom. And maybe just add a, a, a plant. You can trace these if you're not good at drawing plants and, a, and an accessory. So that's what I did. Um, I also just um, added some vertical lines to represent drapery treatments or panels. And then maybe just a, a wave at the top to indicate that there's some folds. And, and this is where you're going to want to now put a piece of tracing paper over and, and redraw this. Uh, the last thing I asked you to do before you do that is to put some type of pattern on the area rug. In this example, um, I went ahead and just did quarter inch markings all the way across the front of the rug. And then I took those back to the vanishing point. And then what you're looking at here, I'll do some vertical lines. And they could have a little bit of movement to them. And, and that's just giving the sense that maybe it's a sisal rug or a nice textured rug or something underneath the bed. If you want to put a, a light fixture right in the center, so what you're seeing here is this is a soffit that goes around the perimeter of the room. So like maybe it comes in 15 inches around the perimeter of the room. And then this area is popping up. So it's moving, it's going up towards the roof line. So it's going up. So part of the ceiling um, that's paneled is covered. So I just wanna find that real quickly the top of my ceiling that's hidden. And I can tell that that's the corner. 
So it's about here. So about here and then over here. So if we're gonna put an X from corner to corner, I'm not completing that. And there is the center of the room at the ceiling. So if you want to put a light fixture centered on the room, you can find one and trace it. You can put one here. Um, it's right about there. So if you want to show you, if you want to see how I put a chandelier in here and, you know, I, I built a square and then I built a square down here just to make sure that when you're working with perspective that that looks right, uh, you can do that. You can look at the lecture that's posted online. For the sake of just kind of quick and time, um, I just put a circle in there because I'm, then I'm not dealing with ellipses. It's just a solid sphere. All right. Then you're going to place a piece of tracing paper over this and draw. Uh, this does a reminder. Remember your punch lines. So for here, I'm just going to remind you that those edges that you want to have more pronounced, you do with a darker edge. So for example, you want that to stand out. Go ahead and, and, and get those finished, redraw. We'll post what it looks like finished. We'll post some student examples. I don't want this to go much over 20 minutes, so I'm not going to do that, but let's see some things that I might want you to look at. When you go to put something out the window, um, tr try not to do too many details. I think you've you've practiced this a little bit at the beginning of the semester. You know, maybe this suggestion that there's the horizon line. Something's right out the window. Something's out the window there. Maybe just the suggestion that there's planks or a seating area outside the window. But you, you, you don't want your eye to go outside. You want your eye to stay inside the room. So make sure that those aren't uh, too pronounced. You can make the punchline of the draperies a little more pronounced. So you can see that. All right, the outside of the chair.
Maybe get some pillows in there. If you ever lose your vanishing point, you can always go back to it. Horizontal lines are horizontal, vertical lines are vertical in a one point perspective. So I think you're seeing you know, the makings of, of a pretty nice room drawing that shouldn't take too much time I'll, I'll, I'll carry on and, and scan this and turn this in. Uh, if you have the time, uh, please do, you know, create a really nice drawing. This will be great for your portfolio. Um, take a little more time than I did to, to make a nice drawing. And I would put, I would trace a nice chandelier since you'll have a piece of tracing paper up there. Just make sure that you're looking up into the chandelier rather than straight on because there is some perspective that's needed there. All right, I hope you have a great last one perspective drawing in, in INT 145, and I will see you next class.